Here she is, by golly. And here's a humdinger of a story that she's been working for uh, you on. So uh, the story has to do with both the corporate media and the corporate politicians. Interesting word choice, huh? They've both become recently obsessed with the word socialism, doing tons of stories on it. Everybody's talking about it. The right calls the left socialist. Uh, they use the word as an attack. They say that uh, uh, any socialist in office will destroy the country. And now some on the left are actually saying, no, it's the right. They're the socialist. They say, in fact, the right are not just socialists, but that they're already ruining the country with their socialist policy. So it gets a little confusing, right? NRS correspondent Michelle Greenstein, good enough to join us now. She's going to try and break this down. I understand the first one, because that's right. a traditional definition. Lefties, Democrats, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they have a tendency to want to give my tax dollars away to right. poor people and old people and whatever, right? So this is what politicians call entitlements, right? Another interesting word choice, things like Social Security, Medicare. The right likes to say this is quote-unquote free stuff, so right. that's where you get the attack on certain Democrats that they're a socialist. And then also you have a newer idea of things like Medicare for all that no most Democrats do not support, but some do, and so this is why you also see the right saying, oh, they're socialists. Now, from very smart people in some cases. Ronald Reagan's, uh, uh, you know, Robert Reich has been uh, saying this, and there are other people. Bernie Sanders said this the other day, right? Mm. He's supposed to be a lefty, right, or is a lefty. I don't know mm -hmm. who's one anymore. That, in fact, it's the Republicans, it's the conservatives right. that are socialists, and their policies are being used now, and they're hurting America. Right. This is the argument of socialism for the rich, capitalism for the poor, which comes from MLK's statement that it's socialism for the rich and rugged free enterprise for the poor. Kind of a tongue-in-cheat statement there. Well, how do I'll they give prove you a that few, point? Let yeah. me give you a few ways they prove that. Oil subsidies. Is that an entitlement? Is that a socialist program? Because if you're going to define socialism as the government giving money to an individual or a group, then an oil subsidy to something like Shell or Exxon would be socialist, would so, it not? And by the way, let's define that, because a lot of people don't know what we're talking about. Oil subsidy means that they're giving my tax dollars to That's a right. company to make them uh, get more money for their oil per barrel. That's right. When Big Pharma, like a drug company like Pfizer, gets money from the government for research and development, is that an entitlement? Mm. Is that socialism? When Monsanto gets a subsidy, you, you could go on and on with this argument, right? When Lockheed Martin gets a tax break, or an Amazon not only doesn't pay any federal income tax, but actually gets a refund on its $11 billion in profits in 2018. Is that socialism? So, well, and... Perhaps if you use the uh, traditional argument that any time you take my tax right. money as a citizen and give it to anyone, whether it's a poor person or a rich person, that's socialism. L and if, they are giving my money to rich people. That's right. If you're using the word socialist to mean that the government gives away money, if you're doing that, then yes, you could say that the right is, quote unquote, advocating for mo more socialism than the left is. But socialism is not just big government, right? That's kind of a reductionist argument. And it's an argument that's been pushed on us in this country for years and years. That's kind of what we're taught, that, you know, it's free stuff, it's free money. But in a real socialist economy, the resources of a country should benefit the vast majority of the people, right? And that kind of thing is starting to resonate with people. So yes, socialism in a social economy, you would have wealth that, that, distribution, but it would all be a first step to maintaining a classless society. The end goal would to be have to have no class so, inequality. And I, and I think if we get nothing out of this conversation that you and I are having right now, mm -hmm. I think one of the very important things that we're getting, and hopefully the people watching are thinking the same thing, it's not as simple as the media and the politicians make it look like. Right. Because their argument is socialism, bad. Right. right? Well, it, I mean, think about it. This is just a fact. Whether or not you support the media or the politicians, that is capitalist media. Those are capitalist politicians, right? Yeah. These are people who would not end up in power if they weren't taking money from large corporations. And I'm talking Wait. about both the media and these politicians. So we don't have any actual socialists in office because a capitalist, a corporation, big pharma, big oil, the weapons contractors, they would never give money to fund a socialist campaign. And you know, in this country, in this in a capitalist society, in order to run for office, unfortunately, you need money. That's well, how the capitalist system works. There, there are those, and I'm among them, by the way, that argues that a free market, right. and if you define that traditionally as a capitalist market, right. is actually a good thing, as long as it's not crony right. capitalism, which is what happens when the government 
forces or gives free stuff right. to those capitalists. See, right. So that's crony that's capitalism. That's why a lot of people say capitalism has kind of outlived its purpose, because in the beginning it was revolutionary, right? But we went from that, we went from free market, the free market stage of capitalism, to monopoly capitalism, where so few hands are controlling so much of the wealth that they're able to control the state. In a real socialist economy, some of the main components would be, yes, wealth redistribution, yes, workers owning the means of production, but all of this is as a first step towards really maintaining the goal of a classless society. So the goal is to have no division, no inequality. And today, inequality has become so great that we start to see the word socialism becoming more and more popular, which is why the corporate press, like you said, and the corporate politicians find it so important to constantly attack the word. And there's an argument that they're both full of crap, that there are some merits to a system where right. the government lays down regulations, and there's also a merit to a system where there's enough of a market-driven control so that people are incentivized to right. work harder and you create new businesses. You can also both full of it because in this system, a socialist would never rise to power. So both the Democrats and the Republicans, you know, they're for the banks, they're for the corporations, they're for big pharma, they're for war. None of them are actually threatening the Nobody wins system. in this conversation, Michelita. I always win. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks Good a stuff. Lot. Good conversation. I'm Rick Sanchez. You found us on YouTube, and that's awesome. But you know what? I'm also live every night at 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern on DirecTV and Dish and Cable and Satellite, the RT app, oh, and Pluto TV. I'll see you there.